Gold, and it's Easter Sunday. It's the 8th of April. You might be listening on Audio Boo, Stroke Talk Gold, or watching this on YouTube, or reading this, because it's the Sunday. Time to blow your tops. Hey, the Sometimes Magazine is part of the review. I'm going to give 15 more minutes to go. This is girl power in Ukraine. Now, you would have probably never known about this particular issue and the issues that Katie Glass raises with Ukrainian women. Pictures of naked girls catch a lot of people's eyes. And uh, these, these topless women have done a lot at Davos. Beautiful girls drawing attention to details that other editors might have blown off. Interesting article in the Sunday Times. More stuff. Hey, you know what jumped out front for me is this concept of Phil Hogan, who's a minister here in, in Ireland. And I went to I went to uh, McDonald's where I uh, downloaded Richard Davenport Hines' Titanic Lives, Migrants, Millionaires, Conmen and Crew. In uh, Cashel on Exit 8, you can uh, get free Wi-Fi there. So I downloaded uh, a week's worth of reading and listening. You should too. But here's the story. Front page story about Phil Hogan and a row of cronyism. And so I stole the middle part of the Sunday Independent, and I, a newspaper I don't read. And I replenished the section I stole with stuff from the Sunday Times, the Sunday Business Post, better reading. Because what, what, what McDonald's does is they just get complimentary copies of uh, the Independent and then just stick it there for people to read. Phil, big Phil, I knew him on the streets of Kilkenny when I lived there. Um, he is one hell of a crony connector. 42% are satisfied with the coalition's work, and Big Phil is one of the enforcers behind the Crow coalition. Harry Leach has a story in the business section of the Sunday Independent. When asked, the chief executives at Ireland's top 250 companies believe Fine Gael will be unable to stamp out political cronyism. 77% of those interviewed think that uh, cronyism will continue to exist. And what Phil's doing is he's just appointing more of the same old, same old political hacks to special committees, paid committees, you get 15 to 30,000 euro a year just to show up for meetings. And here's the inside story. Jody Cochran writes this, writes this story. You know, Phil's got friends with people that raise money for Fine Gael, and one of the big fundraisers was uh, a man named Michael Lowry, described in this article as his friend, Phil's friend, Michael Lowry. And, you know, you can put together the man's diary, Phil Hogan's diary, and get all kinds of connections. Busybody ministers of Phil Hogan, Michael Noonan, James Riley from the Health Department. The real business isn't on the diaries that they maintain for public scrutiny, but it's in places like Hartigan's Pub or Lloyd's Brassier, known in the Moriarty Report, which is the report on uh, corruption, basically, in Ireland, where you conduct your government business. The man doesn't seem to know that cronyism has to stop. Big Phil, I know you're not watching but or listening, but Jesus Christ. Do something before the good of the country and enact some kind of a law. Help enact a law which stops your behavior from being accepted. The Career Network in the business section of the Sunday Independent fingers Stephen McIntyre. Hello, Stephen. Twitter Ireland is where he is. Appointed Director of International Online Sales and Operations at Twitter. Carries on a, a heck of a CV. Worked Google three years. Worked for Ericsson. MBA from Harvard. So um, he's in this uh, group of people that I would connect with occasionally from Dublin. Sunday Times, front page story, Hogan and Rao over Cronyism. And this one's written by Colin Coyle and Siobhan McGuire. Hogan, he well, names who he's put on the different boards. And you can go backwards in their, in their pedigree and find out that he's populating state-funded, that means taxpayers-paid boards, with more of the same old, same old behavior that got the country in trouble years ago. Move to end anti-gay bullying. Sarah McInerney has that story. This week, Rory Quinn, the education minister, will announce the establishment of an anti-bullying forum on May 17th with a working group that draws up practical steps that can be implemented immediately in schools. Teachers need to do stuff. They have to have a kind of a plan to prevent bullying, especially of lesbians, gays, bisexuals. Welcome to step. This is welcome to step, too. There's, in, there's information technology throughout the paper today, not in the technology ghetto, but in the news section, about how technology is helping, in this case, disabled people speak through eye contact with the screens. And there's more in the back here with what the military is doing. Animation boss calling the tunes. Gavin Daly has a really good article about John Rice, his colleagues at Jam Media. Nice guy. 
In Los Angeles over a year, a little over a year ago, John Wright got a call of how it could all work out. Irish Animation Boss was there to crack the U.S. market with Bradley Drawn Roy, a short film about an animated character living in the real world, and uh, ended up meeting Brooke, Jerry Bruckheimer, maker of Pirates of Caribbean, Caribbean CSI television series. Cool stuff. Nice article. Full page. The life of uh, John Rice. He's married. Left Valley Fermit, where he got his uh, level 7 degrees. Lives in Leaksip. Favorite film? The Big Lebowski. And uh, that's The Big Lebowski. You need to know that. Another 10 minutes into this video clip, you're going to win something special. Hey, win from Michele Nalon. He's the weird guy who could use a computer and now the master of his own domains. How I Made It. Michele is uh, interviewed by Sandra O'Connell. Black Knight has more than 50,000 direct customers. 85% of them live in Ireland. Uh, he's doing some good stuff with getting Irish business online, an initiative that, that I support. Now this is cool. Deadly Thoughts, Pentagon Wants, Mind Reading Troops. John Harlow in Los Angeles points out there are new brain reading techniques to help quadriplegic transmit their uh, thoughts. And I showed you that earlier. Scientists call it synthetic telepathy. I think it can be made a reality by 2017. I'm here to tell you the sensors in some of those special helmets which are running in the deserts of California already exist. Words spoken or eye movements made and you can tell someone who's a, a sniper position or artillery position what to do based on just your head movement. Cool stuff. Raise a glass to being poor but happy, Michael Clifford encourages. When the economy gets bad, sometimes it's easier just to laugh to the gloom. That's right. There are results about Ireland being so happy, so happy in the shitstorm that's currently hitting the economy. And how can that, how can that happen? Collectively swimming in a sea of debt. Jobs are thin on the ground. Collapse of the economy has prompted people like me to return to the basics. I spent an hour today knocking spider webs off the ceiling with Mia in her new headgear. You can see it on my liquor.com stroke Irish eyes for the stream. The high price of parenting concerns us when you have kids, things like schools are important. The biggest reason why we'll probably move from Cashel. Hey, you find you know anybody that wants some room? Live in a big townhouse? Tower house in Cashel? Check out my photo stream. The key, key words Melophon. You can see our home for sale if you want it. Sunday Business Post. New squeeze on council funding. Pat Lee, he has that story in the front page of the Sunday Business Post. It's going to be hard for the councils to make their budgets because uh, the household charge isn't 100%. And that money that people are supposed to have spent hasn't come into the council's coffers. News focus item by Michelle Delvan points out that the big conferences for teachers are happening this week. That's John McGavin, the Teachers Union of Ireland General Secretary. There should be a universal entitlement to a certain level of resources. I work at third level. We're um, eh, not necessarily comfortable, but we're seeing this. A rise in student numbers in the Institute of Technology at the same time as savage staffing cuts. We've lost a minimum of three lecturers, which means we're down approximately 45 to 60 hours of teaching time a week. Translated, that means about 50 hours of teaching has been absorbed by other people. Me, 21 hours of teaching a week, 45 to 50 hours of uh, work is what that means. Um, that's not sustainable. Bad days in the baby belt, David McWilliams says. And he points out these cool charts that probably deserve a, uh, a look on their own. Wage share is a percentage of GDP, 98 to 2011. You can see the wage share, um, you know, it's, it goes up and down. And uh, what you'd want is nice wage packets. It's a percentage of GDP, and the, the trend line's downward. Uh, I mean, we're, we're working with a, a net income in our household, back what we had back in 2003, but the expenses aren't that way. And here's another important one, <clears throat> employment at total population ratio. So, like, people were, the ratio of total population being employed in Ireland, really strong 2005, 2007 time frame, and going to the pits right now. Um, the trend's going the wrong way for working people in Ireland. And what's happening to correct that? Austerity, which isn't going to work. Siobhan Brett points out what Facebook's doing. Facebook faces down the rest, she says. Almost four out of five internet users in Ireland have a Facebook profile, according to research by uh, the research agency CART, and uh, a lot of people are spending time on Facebook. 71% of the time spent with social networking is spent on site there at Facebook. Comment and analysis section, finding a bypass around Frankfurt's vast roadblock. 
is what you hear Cliff Taylor saying throughout the week on the news and on interviews. Um, you know, his overall point at the bottom is so far what Michael Noonan, the finance uh, minister, has been doing, going softly, softly with his approach to Frankfurt and the ECB, just doesn't seem to be working. A tricky role to be played by, uh, by the European Central Bank. And, um, I mean, Noonan and his crew ought to actually just face down the Germans, piss them off a little bit, because it's not working to be polite. Hey, finally, um, over here to Reality Bites of an Adrian Weckler column. Five of tech's biggest failures, what Adrian says, Bluetooth headsets failure, failure, he says. But tell you what, Bluetooth works really nicely when you consider what it does in a smart car. Video calls, people aren't doing it. He says, hey, remember FaceTime? Hey, I still use it. Maybe that means I'm, I'm a late adopter. Internet and our tellies, don't know about that. Uh, Adrian says it isn't going to work. DLL, DLNA, wireless technology, technically impressive. It sounds like Adrian's like cameras on tablets. I've seen plenty of people shooting with an iPad tablet walking around taking just images to bulk up their uh, their ebooks or bulk up their, their uh, blog reports. And 3D, could the 3D yet flourish? Probably. I think we're just at the beginning stages of that. But Adrian would say all of those things are failures. This is not a failure. That's the Sony Xperia S. Gorgeous phone. You can win it. Businesspost.ie is where you need to go to and answer the question. The Coen Brothers film is called The Big Dash. And I said the answer already in this short clip. That's me, Bernie Goldbach. That's my back garden. Stuff has to be done in it. If you want to catch up with me, check out Top Gold on Twitter or www.insightview.ie. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.